So if there's one thing we know more than anything else, it's that you, our viewers, love shootouts. You don't want a comparison. Nope. You don't want us to just talk about one sled by itself. You want us to put them in the ring and battle it out. And I think you like it when AJ and I do it because we tend to disagree on some things and get all grumpy with each other. <laughs> so today, we've got a pretty great shootout for you guys, one that we're really excited about. Yep. Today's shootout is the 600 class high performance trail sled. It includes the MXZ XRS 600 E-Tech. It includes the XCR 650 from Polaris and the all new Catalyst ZR from Arctic Cat with the 600 C-Tech 2 in it. So let's get started. And which category do you want to start with? Uh, I think right away we got to talk about engine performance yeah. because that's the big one. The 600 XRS, the motor has not changed. It's the same as it's always been in the 600 R and it's, it's a solid contender. It's very clean. It uses fuel very, very wisely. <laughs> it sips oil um, and it runs clean, like a top. Yeah, runs like a top, cleanest in the business and probably I would say the most reliable overall. It's shown great reliability in the long run. Not that there's been an issue with others, but that's a great motor. It's an extremely refined motor, yep. but it's not an exciting motor. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's nothing bad, but there's nothing terribly awesome about it either. Yeah, there's nothing that stands out. This is without a doubt, the fastest spooling engine I think I've ever ridden. I mean, yeah, it, it gets, good. it just spins up so quick. It doesn't have a ton of bottom end, but the mid range and top end is really meaty and really, really strong. strong. Yeah, yeah, really strong. Good. And hands down, it's the best sounding two stroke um, yep. in the business Absolutely. right now. Yeah, yep. definitely the best sounding two stroke. It's got a throaty kind of raspy sound, a lot of induction noise. I really like it personally. If you're a real motorhead, if you're a ZR buyer, if you're an XCR buyer, if you're an XRS buyer, chances are you're the kind of guy who's gonna appreciate a brappy motor that has an angry sound to it. Yeah. And that one absolutely does. Yeah. Now we move on to the XCR. This motor is, it just has wide range of yeah. power. The power starts at engagement and goes to full shift. Yeah, from, from initial throttle input, it definitely feels pretty stout down low, but it's that kind of mid-range where you get on the pipe and it really comes alive. And it just seems like it has more than both of these motors. At three-quarter throttle, there's still something there. It's like, I wouldn't say this is the most refined, although it is extremely smooth. It is. It's very it, like in the sled, it's very smooth. Yep. Um, it's not the cleanest, but it's very clean and it starts and runs every time. It's never given us any trouble, never given us any reasons to worry about it. So yep. it's a really set, stout, solid motor that's proven. It's been around for a bunch of years now. Yep. Nothing bad to say about it. And I think that's why in this category, it gets the win. Polaris yeah. is number one because it just has the best power. That's all it there does. is to it. Can we agree that it'll be one, two, three? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's category one. <clears throat> let's move on to the next category, ergonomics. To start off, let's start with the Arctic Cat. I mean, the Arctic Cat is the newest. It's the, it's a new chassis. So yep. this is something we've never ridden before. And man, does it ever fit right. Arctic Cat has done such a good job of figuring out how a rider needs to interact with a snowmobile. That's it. Yeah, the center narrowness of the seat is the most like a motocross bike of any snowmobile yep. I've ever ridden. Polaris came out with a narrow seat and said, this is more like a dirt bike. Arctic Cat comes out and they go, oh yeah, check this out. <laughs> this is way more like a dirt bike. And the one thing I find ergo wise, that is super huge. And I think you're gonna probably back me up on this. The side panels aren't that exciting looking. They don't have extra plastics. They don't have painted stuff. They don't have an extra insert. They don't have buttons. They don't have this and that. They're smooth. But when you wanna put your leg out there and slide into the front of the panel and get into a corner and really, really go at it aggressive, there is nothing to catch your knees you know, on. That's something I hadn't thought of about all the extra stuff that's on these panels that make them look cool. Yeah. But actually they're the things that make it hard on your knees when you're sliding back and forth. You're absolutely right. You're right. That's not an exciting looking panel in that yeah. area, but boy, does it work good. When you want to move and talk about a Polaris, this has been the benchmark of ergonomic perfection for many years. We've, yep. we've all agreed this thing is near perfect and that's it good. hasn't changed. It's the same. Yep. It's still excellent. I actually really like the Polaris. I like the way it fits. The one thing that bothers me is when I slide my knee into this panel, it has ridges and areas. Didn't bother me before, but it does now. I know. Yeah. I, it, I, before I thought it was great because it's it's one step, in my opinion, better than the Skidoo yep. for getting off the side of the sled. But now this is one step better than what was yeah. the best. So, I, I mean, really, I think that sums up this category to us, but it's... Well, and the other thing to consider is one thing that I look for is that feet to knees to hip yep. sort of arrangement. How are you sitting? How is your body positioned in those in those pivot points in your body? And Polaris has always had that perfect 
sort of knee to hip ratio, your feet in the right order. Yeah. The Articat I think is as good. I don't think it's necessarily I... world's better, but it's as good. Yeah. The problem is that the Skidoo is nowhere near as Today good. Today riding, I felt the Skidoo felt like I was very low, like I sat with the bars up higher and I couldn't necessarily see the trail and the skis the same way as I could on the Polaris. The Polaris, I felt like I was higher up and I had more of an attack position. And the Arctic Cat, I felt like I was way higher up, but not at a high point where the center of gravity was. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Now, the Skidoo, you just made some perfectly valid points. I completely agree. The seat is a little soft. Your bum is a little low, your knees are a little high. There's a whole bunch of little things that just seem to not work for me as, now it does, it's not that it doesn't work, it just doesn't work as good as this does. If we're gonna line them up in order, we're gonna line up ergonomically, we're gonna put the Articat first, we're gonna put the Polaris second, we're gonna put the Skidoo in third place. Okay, so for the next category, it's gonna be suspension and we're gonna break out front and rear separately because I think it's a valid thing. There's yeah. not everybody's front and rear suspension work in perfect harmony. Um, let's start with the Skidoo which has our motion out back. We have talked a lot about how great our motion is over the years. Yep. You only have to watch one episode of Snow Tracks to hear us talk about how much we love it. It's so awesome. I don't think we have to go into huge detail here. It soaks up every size of bump yep. without ever complaining. It resists bottoming like crazy and it just works. And a cool thing to note is that Skidoo now does use KYB QA3 shocks, which are quick adjust shocks. So much like a Fox QS3 with three position, but something to note, all four shocks on this sled are QA3, quick adjust. There's three positions, but you can put that dial anywhere in between the three positions because it's it, just like a tap faucet. They call it ha uh, half clicks. Yeah, you can go in between anywhere. Yeah. It's exactly like opening your faucet. It's not actually a clicker. Yeah. So you can put them anywhere in between. Something interesting to note, rear end on this sled, it gets the wind by a long shot. Yeah, so let's yeah. just go to number two. And okay. Three. so. We got a Polaris with the Pro CC, and we've got the Arctic Cat with their slide action skid frame that has been tweaked in the Catalyst. Yeah. So, what are the characteristics of these two that you like most? Which, like, what are the things that stand <laughs> out to you as being good for each? So, I do like that this has ATAC, so we can adjust it, but that's rear arm shock only. Yeah. Um, however, I found that the Arctic Cat out back is just, I don't know if it's that it's valved too stiff, but it's just too stiff. The, the soft setting is, is okay but I would like to see the soft setting one full step softer. Well, and there's something to be said about that front arm shock too, that you're not adjusting. Yeah, you so that get... front arm shock might not be valved right and it's yeah. not adjustable. So yeah. you're kind of stuck with that. That's that's my biggest complaint is this, it rides good. Yeah. And when I get into really big bumps, which I did today, I rode through some really big whoops and hit them really hard and fast. I, I swear on firm, you could ride this on a snow cross track and you would not bottom it out. There would be, there would be no bottoming <laughs> out because it's so firm. So I don't see a need for that, even as an aggressive trail rider. But when it's on medium and soft, I find that it rides really good, but it's just not as good as the Polaris. Yeah, the Polaris, the Pro CC is really, it's the perfect midway between the two because it's not quite as plush as an R motion. It's not quite there. It's close, but it's not quite there. Yeah. But it definitely has more plushness than the slide action in the Arctic Cat. It just does everything you want it to do. Yep. It just doesn't do it the best. Yeah. And you can't argue, especially when you got the velocity high-low shocks in the back, you've got high and low speed compression adjustability. Yep. They're a super high quality piggyback shock. They're durable. It just has everything you'd want. Yeah, I mean. So I think these sleds are lined up in order. Yeah. It's first, One, second, third. Two. Three. Yeah, for sure. So the next category we're gonna talk about obviously is gonna be front suspension. And I think I think we should talk about front suspension and handling because they are very yeah. much connected. I'm impressed with the front suspension, the calibration, and the way that it works. And attack really works good on this because it is both front shocks. So yeah. when you change it, you notice huge the yep. difference in the front end. It works really good. Yeah. I will say on hard packed snow, fresh groomed, frozen in the morning, the snowmobile pushes through the corners just a bit more yeah. than I would prefer. Uh, it's, it, but it's very polar opposite to a skidoo, which feels like it's locked on the trail in those conditions. So, but then you switch the conditions and they completely switch. As soon as it gets soft out, this comes around and it starts to ride up front really good. And I'm not talking bump absorption because the bump absorption is actually very great. I, yep. I like it. It doesn't get out of control. It doesn't start to wander or, or do anything weird. You can pound through the whoops and the bumps and the 18 inch moguls wide the, open throttle. In the corners. In the corners. In the corners and it will track. And it just stays yeah. where you want it. So it works good that way. It's just that the push in the corners is what goes away once the snow becomes a bit softer and more granular. All of a sudden this front end becomes like a really, really high contender. We'll just go in order here. We'll go to the Polaris. 
the Polaris has traditionally had the best front end in the industry. It we, still does. It still does. <laughs> yeah, th this is another one that we're just not even going to bother. Polaris' front end about. is like Skidoo's R motion. It is. That is that is what it is. It is the perfect harmony. It's the uh, R motion of the front end. It is. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's the P motion. I mean, <laughs> maybe maybe we shouldn't. Say we that. shouldn't say that. <laughs> it, the thing about the Polaris front end that, that just surprises me every time is when you're riding really hard and you get into those bumps in the corners that start shaking the sled, yep. it doesn't move an inch off of the no. path that you've picked. It just goes around the corner. Yep. Really, the whole sled doesn't even start to shake a whole lot. It, it doesn't lift the inside ski either. No. It will skip through, and if it gets real aggressive and real rough, it will just kind of jump out a little yep. bit but it's progressive and it's controllable and it doesn't get out of control. It, I mean, soaking up bumps in a straight line, it's also the best. Yeah, it's it works good. amazing. It never does anything weird. And then you come over to the Skidoo, which we have never held anything back about the fact that we're not crazy about this front end. But the yep. thing that I noticed during our testing here a little earlier when we were riding back to back was when you put this in the bumps and you start steering through bumps, the handlebars are doing this all the time. Yeah, like, they're moving. It, it's not staying straight. It's going in different directions and I'm not sure which one it's gonna pick. Yeah, it's not the most confidence inspiring front end. In my opinion, it just falls short of these two competitions. So we're gonna line these up basically one, two, three. Yep. The last category is going to be overall build quality. Yeah, and I think it's pretty important. Yeah, and, and the, the area in which we differ, why don't you explain your thoughts on that? My thought is if you are a performance trail rider, you're kind of like a guy who rides a performance bullet bike or, you know, some other performance product. You want that thing to look super cool. You want it to be fit and finished. That's like pristine. It's, it's like a supercar. You don't want to buy a supercar and look at it and go, well, this thing looks kind of like it was hacked together. In my opinion, I give the Skidoo top points in this department because the paint quality, the fit and finish, the plastics, and just the little things that they integrate, to me, it's just like, it's the perfection of fit and finish and, and build quality. It's It gets top marks for me. And see, for me, I think that the performance buyer who's gonna buy one of these sleds is less concerned about absolute fit and finish. They want an aggressive looking sled and their main focus is the performance aspects of the sled. Yeah. With that said, I can't argue with you that the Skidoo definitely has the highest build quality. There's yeah. no question, regardless of what you prefer, yeah. this thing is built better than anything else on the market. Yeah. So it, it's gonna win this category, it, it has to. For sure. Now, how do we rank these two? Because that is, in my opinion, that is the most aggressive looking snowmobile I've ever seen. I think, I think wicked. we called it build quality. So I think we gotta stick to that. Aggressiveness, I, I think this sled looks smaller than every other snowmobile, lighter, and it feels that way when you get on it. It yeah. feels lighter than both of these sleds. It feels like a motocross bike. These feel like a snowmobile. Yeah. And that's something that is completely different, but I think that fits into my ergonomic feel and why this one in yeah. my ergonomics. I think the aggressive look is great. I think the fit and finish and build quality is number three in this department. Yeah. And it's, you, you it's first really... year, it's first year. Yeah. Polaris fits right in the middle. If you look at a Polaris, there's spots that you yep. go, wow, that's perfect. And then there's spots like this little piece right here that keeps popping out, <laughs> that's not perfect. <laughs> so this sled, I can live with no problem with, yeah. the, with the build quality. It's not Doesn't terrible. matter. Yep. That one I can live with too. This one, if you're buying build quality, you're buying a Skidoo, that's all there is to it. Yep. So I think the points are gonna break down one, two, three in this row. After riding for a full day, I think that in this category, the 650 XCR, gets top points. It does. I think it deserves the, top it points. Deserves, yep. The Catalyst is a newcomer that's fighting real hard, has a little ways to go, but it's doing a lot of things better than I think any of us ever expected. But darn for a first year, it's doing good. It's good. Yeah. And the Skidoo is a great quality product, but I think when you push as hard as these two are, it sees just a little bit of a reduction. I think this is where the Skidoo is gonna struggle the most because handling and front end ride quality are so important Super to a guy important. who is pounding corners at full speed. If yep. you're not, then this becomes a lot less of an issue. Yep. But in this category, unfortunately, it is the Achilles heel of this sled. Yep. And I would love to see Skidoo do something about that because I think if they did, they would have a seriously hard to beat snowmobile. The one thing I know about Skidoo is that they <laughs> never stand still. They're always changing and seconds. they're probably working 10 years in advance of this snowmobile. So. There's probably something in the works, but for right now, I think we've leveled the playing field and yep. brought it to actual fact, and it's the XCR.